Actually, you know what we haven't done yet, Hunter? We never tried to call 911. So when you open it, not only does this handle pop out, but it makes it easy to shut it. Let's take a look at my 1997 S600. Savage! It has no styling gimmicks, nothing to date the car. The body is simple. It looks like a Mercedes. If this shape pleases people today, good. If it still pleases people 10, 15 years from now, much better. With this design, time will tell. With Mercedes cars, it always has. So everybody, this, pause, is my 1997 S600. Uh, I wanted to make a walk around video of this. We've done a few now already on the channel. We've had the Koenigsegg, we kind of did one of the SVJ, and we've actually got a couple others coming as well. But you guys seem to enjoy just kind of showing a walk around of some of the cars on the channel. And this one, you know, you guys have not seen, you know, formally like this but you've seen it in the background of a bunch of videos. Uh, you can look at the $1,000 car challenge video we did way back in November. Uh, this was the taxi car for part three, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for the taxi lap. Since then, the only thing that's been done to this car is put different wheels on it. I mean, it's got now, these are 18 inch monoblock wheels and it completely changes the look of the car as you can see from the video. I mean, the car's got a real like, Mafia, like Yakuza stance. Like Hunter, Hunter's a 420 SEL. That's got a cool look to it. But for me, like, you know, uh, whenever I see a W140, it's like bow down. Like it's just such an evil looking car. Um, this car when new was about, um, about $130,000 or 120. But in today's money, like this is a $200,000 car all day long. And everything that's in it, I mean, it, it feels like a $200,000 car. Like it feels premium. Like the fact that this was, this is just, there's so many things to go over with this thing. So come with me, we're gonna walk around this car and I wanna show you some of the quirks and features on it, but also some of the innovations because a lot of people don't realize this car had a lot of firsts for the car industry as a whole. And I'm gonna show you that today. So with all that being said, you know, let's take a look at my 1997 S600. hat über 5 Millionen Testkilometer hinter sich, damit sie ganz entspannt fahren können. Auch wenn sie mal nicht selbst fahren wollen. So allow me to provide a little bit more background on this car. Now, I bought this, I'd say, six or eight months ago. And I bought it from Blake, who runs the Wanna Go Fast events. You know, those half mile racing events. In fact, they still, they still have the key tag on my key ring from him. See, Wanna Go Fast, half mile event racing. Still have it on here, Blake. But 
We were talking on the phone, talking about the car, the history of it, and you know what kind of service it's had, what kind of life it's had. And the more we were talking, the more we realized, do we know each other? Like it just, we were talking about the same things, and turns out we did, just through circles. I had been to his Wanna Go Fast events filming, and you know he had seen some of the videos that I produced while at the Wanna Go Fast events. For those who don't realize, like a black on black 90s Mercedes, specifically from 97 to 99, but finding one of this year, of this condition, of this mileage, this car only has 85,000 miles on it. Finding one like this, very rare. Not to mention a black car with a black interior. There's lots of tans out there, there's lots of blue cars with tan, but you're not gonna find a black on black. It's very difficult. This car to me also just looks like quintessentially Benz, you know, like this, this comes from the era of Mercedes where it was the last of, you know, when, when they say Mercedes, the best or nothing like this is, this is really I th like the last of that, in my opinion, this was the last of, you know, the really over-engineered Mercedes as well as just being of a very high build quality. Now that I have this door open, we can show you one of the innovations of the W140. So a lot of cars nowadays have soft closed doors. In fact, on the 2020 Urus, it is a new option. It's a new feature for it. Well, Mercedes had you beat 30 years ago. This was the first car in the world to do that. It's pretty cool. Continuing on the soft closed door thing, the trunk also has the soft close as well. So when you open it, not only does this handle pop out, but it makes it easy to shut it. It also is pretty soundproof as well, just like the rest of the car. So anything you put in there, you know, it, you can't hear it. Something else that these cars are very well known for, and a lot of people think are bulletproof, are the windows. This car, famously, has dual pane glass which, like I said, lots of people think is bulletproof. As much as I'd love to say yes it is, it's not. But it is cool that this was the first car in the world to have dual pane glass. And it does make a massive difference. Have you seen one of these cars that has been armored? There's one for sale right now on Bring a Trailer. Where? Not Bring a Trailer, it's Hemmings. But it's been for I sale. I did see it. It's like 70 you right can't now. register as well. Yeah, it used to be like 95. There's a picture on there that shows the window lowered and you can see the one, two, three, four, five, six, like <laughs> all of the layers of glass. It's amazing. Um, but I think the thing weighs like six or 7,000 pounds. It's absurd. So the glorious V12 six liter S600 engine. And yes, this is the same block that eventually went in the Zonda. Isn't that kind of cool? But the, uh, it's, highly, it's much different than this. You know, it's, you know, it's been bored, it's been stroked. The one in the Zonda is dramatically different than this engine. I've put about 5,000 miles on this since I bought it. And it's given me, you ready for this? Zero problems. That is the complete opposite of what most people expect with these cars. The exterior is great, but the interior is probably, I mean, it is my favorite thing, because if you spend all your time on the interior of a car, so it should be a nice place to be. Like you look around this car and it is just, it's a really nice place to be in. You know, call me, uh, you know, call me biased, but you know, there's nothing in this car that makes me think to myself, man, this is a really old car. You know, like sometimes you get in like the early 2000s cars and you get in and you go, whoa, this is dated. You know, like especially the early 2000s S-classes, they have that, you know, the very early digital um, instrument cluster and you know, all the, the buttons and the readouts were all, um, they were the first like iterations with like a pixelated screen. And nowadays, you know, because of how far technology has come, everything looks kind of dated. On this car, 
Granted, nothing looks new, <laughs> but you know, nothing in here screams to me just dated. Though one of the, my favorite things, and it only the S600s have it, is the starter noise. Ready? That noise right there. Yeah. You know, that, that, brrrr, like that is akin to only these cars. Every other car is a standard, like, you know, it sounds like every other car is starting. But only the S600s uh, have that starter noise. You knew you were driving an S600 as opposed to any other model um, in the W140s. If you notice here, the entire dash and all of the console here, this is all wrapped in leather. Um, the standard, any other tier doesn't have this, the, or the wrapped lever here. Love that sound. Um, you can also see the door, dude. <clears throat> you shut this door. This whole panel, and I noticed this with, um, when I was sitting, when I first got in the car, it was one of the first things I noticed. This whole door panel, if you need to replace your door panel on your S600, you only can get S600 door panels because this whole piece has been leather wrapped from Mercedes. This piece, this piece, all the door panels are that way. So on an S320, an S420, an S500, you can, and it's a, if you're looking for a black door panel, you can get any one from any car, but not an S600. So nice little exclusivity thing. Another thing that was kind of innovative for this car was um, parameter steering. So basically what it did was it changed the effort and just how easy it was to turn the steering wheel or how stiff the power steering was based on your speed. So if you're um, in a parking lot, it's very, very easy for the power steering to turn left and right, um, which obviously parking this you know massive boat is uh, makes it a lot easier. But when you're driving at speed, you know, the steering wheel is a little bit heavier. You have a little bit more steering feel. So if you've ever driven a, a car without power steering, um, driving at speed is lovely. The steering feel is incredible. But driving at anything besides at speed is horrible. This is the best of both worlds. If uh, you had this in the 90s, you were the coolest kid in town. How you adjust the steering wheel. How many other cars do you know of in the 90s had one button down here that lets you electronically address, address? How many other cars in the 90s had a button down here that lets you adjust the steering wheel? Not to mention while driving, which is very cool. This car does have the button for the rear sunshade, which I'm not going to hit, but because I fear that it won't come back up or go back down. Actually, we can try. Well, that was the problem in the Maserati. Oh. There it goes. So what Mercedes people will tell you is don't put this up all the way because once it goes up, because you can see the arms kind of, I don't know if you can get that yeah, hard, yeah, you see the arms? Yeah, they're like scissors. Yeah, so what happens is the arms come up and then they get stuck. And the problem is the one thing that was not built terribly well in that whole mechanism is the gear that um, brings it up and down is made of plastic and it gets it degrades and essentially what ends up happening is like i said those arms get stuck now they, those were stuck up for like two months after i first got the car and my buddy jason drove the car and he put the sunshade down and it went down no problem so that's the first time we've actually put it up since so that was kind of a gamble <laughs> on video but um that works which is nice so now we can put it down oh that was up we can put it down one thing that the s600 does have and works the damn telephone watch this if you want to make phone calls boy you can Actually, you know what we haven't done yet, Hunter? Hmm. We never tried to call 911. I don't think we should, because it will go through. Ready. Let's, let's try it here.
Okay, so the answer. Ready. So the answer is no. Yeah, so an option on these cars for the 500s and the 600s, then you could have this installed by the dealer if you wanted to, were the phones. Um, so I think it would be fun if I found out if it was even possible. Truth be told, I don't think it is. But if we were able to take this to a Benz dealership and actually get like a SIM card or a service on this, because can you imagine you get pulled over? Like a uh, cop says you're on the phone. It's like, well, it's factory equipment. Yeah. One of the things that the W140 had that I thought was very cool is when you turn off the car, you can use the climate control for another 20 minutes. It'll stay on. It's, really? It's designed to do that. So let's say you were going in to grab your prescription or you were going to the grocery store or going to the gas station to get a drink, whatever the case is, and you don't want your car to get cold or warm, you could hit the AC after the car's off and it'll kick back on. So watch this. Car's on. Climb control. You turn the car off. I'm gonna go get something to drink at my 7-Eleven, but I hit the rest button. And then AC kicks back on. So that'll stay on for 20 minutes. It doesn't ruin the battery. I mean, it's one of the reasons the car has such a massive battery besides all the other electronics in this car, but it's designed to stay on for 20 minutes, which is very cool. When you sit in the back here, not only do you have plenty of legroom, but the back seats are actually reclinable. So they're back all the way right now, but I could put them up if I wanted to to give myself even a little bit more legroom. So watch this. This whole back apparatus comes up, which is pretty cool. So this actually does not move for whatever reason in my head. I thought it did move this whole back piece, but this is just the equivalent of a big couch cushion. Um, but this whole back, it makes a good amount of noise, but it does recline, which is pretty nice. This car also had, uh, it was an option and this car doesn't have it, but this, uh, you could get this car. It was a very rare and expensive option to have the two plus two seating. You also have controls for the individual headrests here. So this one works. You can put the headrest down if you'd like, so you don't see it anymore. You've also got, you know, the options to heat and cool your seats, which both still work on this car. You've got the, each side has its own cigarette lighter and power outlet there, which is nice. But it's just a nice place to be, man. It's a nice back seat. Every, there's nothing that feels cheap in this car. Nothing at all. It makes it feel more like a limo. And for a lot of other countries besides the US, people were driven around in this car. Um, an option for this car, which I'd like to get, but I only can find for sale in like Latvia, um, is you can get fold out tables for this. They, there was actually a, um, a system that would attach to here and it had buttons that was all Mercedes stuff and it had tables that would fold out themselves, which is pretty cool. It wasn't just a button and it falls down. There was actually a button that would, uh, it had a whole apparatus and belt system that it would come down, which is very cool. Um, you also have on the S600s back here, you've got your own climate control unit. So you turn this bad boy on, you get some serious air boy. It takes a moment to come on, but there it goes. You can get your own air there. And it blows. Sounds like a vacuum cleaner, but you know, if you need airflow. That's air the flow. job, yeah. Now something, if you're looking to buy one of these cars, you can always tell if someone's replaced the taillights by one simple thing. These taillights uh, right here, this bar, as you can see, Hunter, even on video, it looks pink, doesn't it? Yeah, it kind of does. It does look pink. Yeah. The reason for that is because after many years of sun, these all turn pink. They were originally white from the factory, but they turned pink with age. So if you ever see one of these that has a completely white one or has a, like maybe even like an updated one, there are LED different ones you can buy off eBay that all look like trash. The original, if a car has an original taillight assembly back here, they will be pink by now. All of them will be. That is unless the car has been sitting in a garage for its entire life, which 
<laughs> not had then, the opportunity to sun fade. Huh? And not had the chance to sun exactly. fade. Exactly. Yeah. But any car that has spent any amount of time outside, if these are not pink by now, they're not the original ones. So if it's a zero accident car and they say nothing about the taillights, well, you can tell how truthful they're being selling the car. All right, so we are now driving the S600 Le Boat. This thing has a 26.4 gallon tank. That's an expensive fill-up. The funny thing about that is not only does this car have a 26.4 gallon tank, so does my Lamborghini Murcielago. Jeez. Interesting, they're the exact same amount. And the only other boat in my life that I want to own is like an early 2000s, like a 2006 Phantom. And that car, I looked, also has a 26.4 gallon tank. That is strange. That all three of the uh, V12 boats that I want in my life have the same fuel capacity. Which means I will know that every time I fill them up, I'll spend about $80. So, not cheap. But it's worth it because they're V12s. Let's real quick, we can talk about the suspension. Right now, we're going around this corner at about 55. And there's a pretty decent amount of body. Yeah. Yeah. Use the ass meter and tell me how much body roll that was. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit that sports suspension, my guy. Hit that. And we're gonna try and make it to this light. But we're not gonna no. make this light. <laughs> I made a big deal earlier that, you know, the interior of this car doesn't feel dated. And, um, you know, a big thing with that when you're driving is, you know, where do you spend the majority of your time in a car? You spend it inside. You know, not outside so it doesn't matter how good the outside of a car looks if the interior is a trash place to be or it feels dated or it's not welcoming it's not necessarily going to be fun to drive um, and this car sitting in it it just it doesn't have that same feeling as like say an early 2000 mercedes s-class and i know because i've driven them i've driven an s600 i've driven an s55 i haven't driven an s65 um, but I've driven the AMG version of an early 2000s S-Class, and I will tell you, it doesn't feel as good to drive that car. It does The interior, the car doesn't feel as big. It doesn't feel, it feels more like a sports car than, um, than a luxury sedan, a four-door car. But let's, uh, let's give it the beans, why not? So that's second gear, that's first gear, and this is at 20. That's 70. It's got some get up. And it just floats. Now, watch this. Feel how little less body roll there is. Oh my lord. It actually grabs. Like, it's a lot less. Like, I, I, don't, is, yeah. I don't think the camera can properly show how much less there is. There's, I really don't think there's a way. You just gotta ride in the car. But we took that corner at 40 the first time, and the car rolled not more than it just did going around that corner at 70. Yeah, you could tell when I rebounded back from the yeah. corner. <laughs> but it just, it, the car feels lighter, you know? Like, it, And when we go, this is specifically evident and helpful when we're driving on highways and driving spiritedly, being able to keep up in this boat, having the ability to hit a button and the car handles dramatically better, especially on the twisty roads or whatever, it's a big help. And it does make a difference, which is very cool. You know, so it's nice. I love it. I love the fact that that feature works and that's one of the reasons that I don't want to put this car on coilovers, even though in the long run, you know, that it would make the car less to maintain. Um, I think that that feature and the way that the car currently operates, it's worth the money. It's, it's uh, you know, you get, I knew what I was getting into when I bought this car. And I knew that one of the expensive things to maintain was that suspension. Now that I've experienced it, I don't want to ever drive the car without it. Mercedes and park and you rev it, it 
it stops at four grand. So it's kind of like a two-step. But if you put it in neutral, it'll rev to red line, which is cool. Um, but it does rev up quick. It smells like quality. It's very nice. But I guess with that said, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. The next thing for this car will be it's getting its first service done. Uh, I've driven it 5,000 miles since I bought the car with zero issues. But it's getting its first, um, first service. We're gonna address a couple things that it needs, like this bumper, because that is so annoying. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. But that bumper, the sunroof needs to be realigned a little bit. And um, probably it's gonna get its you know, first oil change under my ownership, spark plugs. And this is gonna be coming on Savage Rally which is gonna be very cool. And for those who don't know about Savage Rally, that is gonna be from October 2nd to the 5th. I'll put a little more information in the description for you. You can go click on it, sign up. But this is going to be so much fun on Savage Rally. I haven't decided whether it's just gonna be a driver's car or a camera car. Right now I'm leaning more towards the camera car because just imagine how cool this would be with the massive camera rig on there. Like shout out Golden Peaks Productions, Jacob. Like just think, the camera rig, just big, big arm in front of it. You know, we'll have to get the governor of the speed, the top speed governor removed, but it would be cool. So anyway, that's all I got. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this little walk around of the S600. It is by far near and dear one of my favorite cars. I spent a lot of time looking for it and I'm glad I have it now and it's never leaving my possession again. So let us know what other cars you want to see us do a walk around of. I'm going to do the Murcielago. I'm going to do the Countach. Um, I'm just thinking off the top of my head now, we could do the turbo. Ooh. Camera to turbo. Ooh. Remember this thing? The thing that you just see in the videos just destroying like everything? Yeah, this is the barometer to base like everything off of our honor channel. You know, it makes like 850 wheel. So anyway, that's a, that's a Randy walk around video because this was done you know, before Savage Garage was a thing. So. We'll have to do that, but let us know in the comments what other cars you'd like to see done. But I think that's it. Thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time. We're gonna put the hood of the S600 into service mode. Okay. So, what you're gonna do, let me see, it is, where's the pin for it? There it is. So you see this pin? Mm -hmm. What you're gonna do is you're gonna push that pin in okay. on the other side. So, basically <laughs> what this allows you to do, it makes it look like this is going to come off. So you gotta just wiggle it, but it'll come undone. This pin right here, right, the big yeah. one? See that? Did you get it? It's in. Keeps her going. Keep her going. Let her go. That <laughs> is how you service the windshield wipers. If I recall correctly, you can service this one with it down, but you couldn't do this one. So this is how you correctly service the windshield wipers. And I gotta tell you, that is high. <laughs> That is, just for scale, just take a step back, Hunter. Um, oh, I did. Oh, yeah, I did. It's, uh... Yeah, you're looks, sta he's standing right up next to it now. This looks broken. <laughs> this looks, <laughs> this doesn't look correct at all. Well, didn't know it did that. No, <laughs> but it does.